Washington State's Governor Jay Inslee and Attorney General Bob Ferguson appear to have colluded to help suppress and prevent the release of recently uncovered records about historic medical human experiments that were conducted on Washington State's prison inmates. Now, I recently wrote about this on an article at We the Governed, and I encourage you to go to this article link below if you want to read the original documents. I've linked them all up in there. And uh, these records were really just part of a trove of paper records that were over 500 pages that were apparently discovered by Washington State Department of Corrections employees at the Washington State Penitentiary in Walla Walla uh, back in 2020, a couple years ago. But in 2021, early 2021, so over a year ago, Governor Inslee was informed about these records, which included vaccine, radiation, uh, hallucinogenic, and these other uh, human medical experiments that were conducted on inmates, on, on people, without much, if any, informed consent at the time. But it appears that the Inslee administration and AG employees directed by Bob Ferguson, they prefer to suppress these historic records so that nobody could know what happened. Now remember, at the time, Inslee was neck deep in his big plans to kind of purge the state of, uh, and all these state agencies and these state workers who were free thinking or resistant to implementing his vax mandates. And he was planning at the time to fire quite a few of them. It's very clear that he was going into that mandate at the time last year to do that. So it appears that because these records, maybe they would be noisy and potentially disrupting to Inslee's narrative about his upcoming vax mandate and uh, for state workers, and as well as kind of his an eternal emergency lockdown, in coordination with Ferguson, he decided let's keep these records concealed. So until now, these records have remained hidden from the public. You can go down and download them uh, below and they're hidden no longer. At this point in time, this is an exclusive uh, story from We the Governed, and thanks to whistleblowers and sources inside the Department of Corrections, I was able to get these records and find out about this story. Now, unfortunately, we have an ugly history in Washington State prisons when it comes to human medical experiments. Um, really, this goes back uh, from about the 1950s until the early 1970s. Prison inmates were frequently used as these test subjects for uh, a variety of these medical experiments, most of which we would consider extremely unethical and probably shocking to most people today. The modern concept of informed consent, which people have talked about when it relates to these, uh, the vax mandates and all that lately, that wasn't exactly in vogue at the time back then. And so while these records sometimes demonstrate that uh, there was some limited consent by the prison inmates, that appears unlikely that they were properly notified uh, about all the side effects and certainly not the potential harm uh, that these experiments could and obviously did inflict on the inmates at the time. Now these experiments included things like subjecting the inmates to high dose radiation of the testicles and then forcing them into vasectomies afterwards after the experiments were done. Now these radiation experiments were publicly revealed in the 1990s, that's when it kind of first went public, and that led to a class action lawsuit at that time that were filed by both the survivors of those experiments and survivor families, or families for some of those who didn't survive. And the plaintiffs at that time, the people who were suing the state, they argued that they were not given adequate informed consent of their constitutional rights and that they, this violated um, their rights and the ethical rules that the state basically chose to ignore. And that lawsuit ultimately came to head and was settled in 2000 for a settlement of about $2.4 million. I've linked some of those articles related to that case down below as well if you want to do a little bit more historical research there. But the records that we're talking about here that were uncovered in 2020, they included some of these records about uh, that were responsive to that radiation uh, lawsuit at the time. And obviously, the state never provided them during the discovery phase of that case. So that would be documents that were kept concealed from the plaintiffs. I don't know if it was enough of them to have made a change in how the outcome of that case were, but that's only part of it because the rest of these records were actually experimental, uh, they were records of things like experimental injections uh, that were given to incarcerated prisoners, uh, both in, at the state penitentiary in Walla Walla and also the Department of Corrections prison in Shelton. And for example, these records uh, document the use of DITRAN on at least 17 inmates and participants, I guess for lack of a better term, in the prison system. 
Now, Ditran, uh, for those who didn't know, and I had to look this up, it's a drug that was developed by the U.S. military as part of their chemical warfare efforts in the 1960s. So Ditran has like, these mind-altering uh, properties. It's, it's kind of similar to LSD in the sense that it's like, kind of similar to the LSD experiments which have been publicly exposed in recent times that kind of came out of that same era. And some of these records you can see uh, that are actually include observations by uh, the people working in the prison system at the time, and they were documenting at least two different inmates, two different people, experiencing psychotic breakdowns and episodes during these experimental trials on these inmates. Now, in addition, uh, some of these records also talk about and document an influenza, kind of an antiviral um, uh, experiment that was being uh, cr created by DuPont. It was kind of a drug that was created by DuPont at the time. And it looks like they injected this in about 840 subjects during that time as well. And uh, then there's also some records in there uh, about experiments using this uh, cough suppressant called ethne, uh, which I don't know too much about. But in addition to these historic records, which Inslee and Ferguson suppressed, they're all linked down below and on my article, all 500, I think it's 517 pages of them or so, I also got a uh, variety of uh, heavily redacted, uh, really absurdly redacted records from the AG's office and Department of Corrections employees uh, and others where they're basically uh, indicating a substantial amount of communication and discussion about these uncovered collection of public records, which have never been made public until now. And then the clear concerns about the liability uh, to quite a few different people uh, and other related issues just around how they're, the narrative and what they're going to do about it. So the first question that was apparently asked by the administration, uh, into the administration last year, was a good one. And frankly, it's the same one I would ask if I was governor. And that is, were any of these experiments conducted during the last 10 years during the Inslee administration? And that's a reasonable question to ask, same one I would ask. And the answer appears to be no. So most of these are older. But when you think about it, at this point, you would think that since obviously these are historic uh, records, right? They have nothing to do. It's from an earlier era. It's from administrations long since past. In fact, most of the people involved in it, uh, they're not even alive anymore. And so you think the Inslee and Ferguson administrations would just go public with these records, right? Throw the historic administrations under the bus, talk about an uh, ugly window into our dark history, something like that. And in fact, you can actually see from these records that I linked below that there was actually a draft press release that kind of was along those lines. And it was produced to say just that. However, it appears that Inslee decided to intervene. And he specifically directed his minions to uh, stop and suppress these records. So why? Why would you do that? And here's what reading the lines between these heavy and, frankly, absurdly redacted uh, documents uh, comes into play. I mean, you have to kind of read between the lines when they redact everything, and you got big black marks on it, and, uh, and looking at handwritten notes in the, in the uh, columns and looking at them all when you read them all. It appears that uh, it was being discussed in early 2021, and this was right as Governor Inslee is preparing his vaccine mandates for state workers, and basically this plan purge the bureaucracy of all those evil state workers with religious or medical exemptions, or just those who didn't want to get the jab, the ferry workers and people like this. Now, Inslee knew there would be some pushback. He had to have known this at the time, clearly based on these documents. And so it appears he didn't want even this old, 50-year-old historic hint of government wrongdoing or government-directed human medical experiments uh, to potentially become part of any kind of a counter-narrative to this heavy-handed and, and abusive vaccine mandate plans. I mean, after all, we're still in an internal state of emergency even now, multiple years after the fact, after it started. So this is the endless emergency that never ends. So, of course, the preferred Inslee narrative must be protected at all costs. So what did they do? They buried the story. They hid the truth. This seems to be classic Governor Inslee, and AG Bob Ferguson was right there with him on this classic behavior. Now, would the timely release of these records in 2021, or even when they were first discovered in 2020, uh, would that really have changed the narrative all that much? Uh, to me, it seems unlikely, but who can really know or quantify the internal drama, the special interests that were involved, or the general arrogance of a governor who's really clearly enjoying this endless emergency, the ability, this unchecked power that he's uh, been experimenting with for the last couple years. So keep in mind, 
last year at the same time, while this is being discussed, the legislature had essentially been neutered. Uh, they were sent home to play pretend and uh, zoom it in. Don't call it in, but just zoom it in. And uh, it had been transformed into a shell of its constitutional self. Remember, the public had been fenced off from access to the Capitol campus. And if you followed some of my earlier videos, you'll know I even had a protest up there of uh, let's commit an act of free speech and get arrested day because uh, the state was trying to issue fines to anybody who brought sound equipment on. It was just, it was absurd. And of course, during the same time, the Department of Labor and Industry employees, where they were tossing out six-figure fines like it was confetti at a Fourth of July parade, and A.G. Bob Ferguson was busy destroying as many small businesses as possible in Washington State just because he could. So would a trove of documents exposing historic government medical abuse of prison inmates have impacted the narrative at that time very much? Uh, who knows? But Inslee was clearly concerned and so was Bob Ferguson. So I'm posting all these records on my website and the article linked below for all the download. You can read them for yourself. It's a lot of records. And keep in mind the historic records often consist of some handwritten documents and notes which have been scanned, and that's how I'm able to post them on as a PDF file down below. The interagency emails and the heavily redacted communication, I include those there as well. And this alone consists of hundreds of more pages of reports and documents. You can read them for yourself. There's sure to be gems to uncover in there for those who actually appreciate this type of information. And I'm sure that there's going to be more written about it soon, not just by myself, but by others, especially as they dig into it. They might see things I missed. However, in the big scheme of things, this really just raises much bigger questions that all of us should probably be asking right now. For example, how many other records have been suppressed, concealed, or destroyed by the Inslee administration and by Bob Ferguson, which would probably be even more impactful than this trove of historic documents linked below. Do the Inslee or Ferguson administrations have any ethical boundaries when it comes to destroying or concealing embarrassing public records, which might really reflect poorly on the state, far more importantly than the ones that, they delete, that they've been suppressing in this instance? Or maybe they reflect poorly on the political leadership. Or perhaps, maybe these documents that get suppressed might reflect poorly and expose the special interests that support this administration. And finally, most importantly, the question that I think all of us need to be asking is, what else are these guys trying to hide from us? Now, I want to thank anybody who's helped me produce uh, and get access to some of these records as well as many others. Uh, as whistleblowers and uh, people who work for the state, uh, your efforts are greatly appreciated and without you, Many of these stories would never happen. You've shown up and you've decided to make a difference and expose the truth about what's going on. Which just reminds me to tell everybody and to thank you, but also to remind everyone else that if we're going to have a future, if we're going to get control over the instruments that we've created, uh, we have to remember that the future belongs to those who show up.